Coming on to knowledge representation and memory organization. It's very important to understand three terms, concept, category and schema. So let's start it with a very simple example. I have the fruits. Now what is this concept of fruit? Fruit is a category under which I have a concept of let's say mangoes. On the other hand, what I can do is I can make mango now a category and I can put up different varieties of mangoes as a concept. So what a category and a concept is? Concept is a subset of the category if we look into that and concept is a representation of a unit of knowledge with mental categories, mental objects or events associated to it. Category on the other hand is organized group of concepts that is taking into place. You have similarities among other concepts that could be seen under a category. And finally you have a schema and this schema is a mental framework of representation of the knowledge and the assumptions about the world that exists. So this whole concept was brought about under the representation of knowledge and how we actually organize the information in our long term memory that we have already talked about and moving with higher cognitive elements that we see we are trying to use most of the long term memory with minimum redundancy that could be seen there could be serial reproduction as what the bartlett said and that is what we call as the memory of constructive process or memory as a constructive process because we understand something for let's say 10 minutes 15 minutes we take a break and then we say or explain that concept again or ask the participants to repeat repeat those concepts or recall what they have done so this is what is a kind of serial reproduction or a constructive process so whenever we are talking about schemas it is a organization of the past reactions that have taken place past experiences that have taken place into a much more systematic form the next is dual coding hypothesis now dual coding coding hypothesis talks about image as a very concrete form of representation of any of the mental attributes that is there so as soon as i say the word school the first thing that comes into your mind is your own schooling so what you see is a visual building of your school so there could be classification of the concepts as concrete nouns and abstract nouns Concrete nouns are those which are concretely coded into images. For example, cow. So this is a mental model where you can depict an image of an animal. On the other hand, there could be an abstract concept. An abstract concept could be a verbal or a descriptive code. A verbal or a descriptive code can be, let's say, speaking truth. Uh, being non-violent. So what are those? Those are abstract concepts that cannot be uh, concrete in nature. So when we are talking about mental models, we are trying to assimilate both the concrete images as well as the verbal descriptions for the same. And there is where we are trying to understand uh, the cooking, let's say, uh, cooking process of any of the exotic dish that you like. So what you need to understand is the ingredients or the raw material which becomes the concrete noun and then the process of making which becomes a abstract concept so we try to assimilate both the concrete and the abstract concepts together the next important concept is eyewitness and false memories what is eyewitness uh, there was a very good example or an experiment that was done by Loftus and Loftus basically talked about uh, a scenario where a group of individuals witnessed a car accident and then they were asked to report the incident so what happens is the offense would be taken into consideration based on what the eyewitnesses have for the accused and this could be manipulated how let's say the eyewitnesses were shown a film where two cars smashed badly 
so after seeing that film when they are asked again about the same event or the offense that had happened their responses might vary similarly if i meet the eyewitnesses and say that the cars is smashed or the cars contacted there is a difference and that difference would bring a difference into the answers that have been revealed by the eyewitnesses so eyewitness memory is something that is very very susceptible to the external phenomena that occur around it and usually used in criminal proceedings trials court trials that are seen the next is false memory false memory means that the imagination of the events that did not take place become so powerful that you forget the actual incidents that took place so let's say in the actual incidents the two vehicles contacted but then you were shown a movie or an incident where the two vehicles smashed badly now when you were asked to depict or reveal what had happened there was a change in the aspect that was laid down and this change was because of the generation of the false memory seen because of the uh, film that was shown to you again there was the readings that were done so there was a kind of constant the thrust that was given onto your memory systems and that led to generation of false memories and imagination of the events that did not take place actually the next important thing is the repressed memories now what are repressed memories sometimes there are incidences which are very very traumatic very very emotionally hurting to you painful threatening so what you try to do is you try to keep them out from your memory and you try to forget those and that is what are called as repressed memory but in some cases what actually happens is a person loses a mental stable uh, situation where he comes in a stage of fuge now this is a stage where a person tries to attain a new identity a new name or a new address so when he ha he gathers a kind of two personalities one personality which does not know anything about the other personality that exists there are cases associated with forgetfulness amnesia lack a loss of memory that is seen with higher anxiety a similar good example that you might witness in your daily life is forgetting during your examination getting nervous during the exam and forgetting what to write into the examination is one of such examples the next concept that we move forward with is forgetting now forgetting whenever the information that is brought to the long term memory is lost we say there is a encoding error or there is misplacement of some of the information that takes place and this leads to forgetting what was an interesting experiment that was done was by ebbinghaus and he brought in nonsense syllabi and tried to ask or see how much retention actually takes place now the studies reveal that the rate of forgetting is highest during the first 9 hours and by around 3.5 hours you uh, 3.5 days you see only 25% of the content that you read is actually remembered in your mind so this forgetting could be by three ways it could be due to trace decay it could be due to interference or it could be due to retrieval failure retrieval failure is very very simple where i say i am unable to think what actually was in my mind and there has been traces because of the time that has taken place or the associated concepts i have forgotten so that is retrieval failure i know the concept but at the time of recall i am unable to produce those concepts so might be with the retrieval cues it could help me remember those concepts in a very apt fashion the next is interference interference is either uh, a kind of distraction that is into your actual systems so it could be proactive or retroactive now what is the difference proactive means moving forward that means the past is interfering with your learning systems so in the past if i know english language and now i am trying to learn french 
This English which I had remembered in my past is interfering with my present French learning and that is where you have a proactive interference. On the other hand, there is retroactive interference which means there is a backward moving interference where new learning is interfering. So, new learning is interfering. What does that mean? This implies that if now I am learning French, whatever is learned for English is not into my mind and there is this new learning of the French that is interfering with my uh, learning and there is the retroactive interference that actually takes place. Whatever I have learned new is interfering with my past learning. The next is the forgetting due to trace decay. Trace decay is use, use disuse theory what we can say. So since you have not been using that concept for long, you start to forget those and that is what is called as a trace decay. Usually when you remain awake during your waking conditions, there is uh, the rate of forgetting but this rate of forgetting increases when you are sleeping or you are in your uh, sleeping conditions so that is what is we call as forgetting due to trace decay but be it whatever kind of forgetting we can definitely enhance the memory by various ways this could be mnemonics so what could be good mnemonics that we could think of it could be a image and a keyword let's say you want a child to remember what is cow you can show a picture of the cow and ask the student to remember it so that is image and keyword method that is adopted the next is methods for organization which could be in the form of chunking or the first letter technique chunking what does it imply Chunking implies that there is group of words that I say 19001800111140. So what I'm trying to do is I can break this into groups of four 19001100. So what I'm trying to do is I am trying to chunk those, group those into smaller things and then remember those. First letter technique is very good example is when you try to remember the colors of the rainbow. Whip gear. So violet, indigo, blue green yellow orange and red so first letter of each of the colors so v for violet i for indigo b for blue and so on so this is what is the first letter technique the next is uh, the keyword method whatever you are trying to do you are trying to bring in the most important thing out of it and understand this for example specifically when you are learning foreign languages you are trying to rote memorize but if you have some keyword associations then it becomes much easy to remember and memorize the next is method of loci method of loci means you are trying to put things into a serial order so let's say i want to go out for uh, shopping today and i want to bring in the household things i have created a list of the items when i go into the market i remind myself okay for the kitchen i need these items for the household appliances i need these items and so on and so forth so there is a kind of serial processing i move from one room of my house to another place in my house and see what all requirements are there and based on that i bring in all my shopping list or i complete the shopping list the next is uh, understanding why these mnemonics are actually beneficial mnemonics helps in deep level processing so when you are doing a deep level processing there is minimum interference which can be because of the similar content being created by someone else and there is retrieval cues which is given by pqrst so that's a very good mnemonic again to remember p for preview where you try to familiarize yourself with the existing content and you have a kind of quick overview of that. Q for questions that you raise, R for reading the lessons, S for self recitation of the lessons and T for testing yourselves. So that is where you have PQRST which is very very important basis or the benefits of mnemonics understanding the retrieval clues. So that was a very important and a basic fundamental on memory and forgetting. We will be covering many more lectures. Stay tuned. Have a wonderful day.